Hi, my name is Martina Matskin and I'm the director of the short film uh, The Name of the Sun and Nombre del Hijo. ¿No te gustaría dejarte de nuevo el pelo largo? ¿Por? No sé, te quedaba lindo. El hermano de Agus tiene pelo largo y se hace colita. Hi, and welcome to the 34th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig, and I'm sitting down with director Martina Matskin to discuss her movie El Nombre del Hijo. Hi, welcome Hi. to the festival. Thank you very much. How do you like it so far? Uh, it's very beautiful. I just seen one movie, uh, Mesa Lynch Year, that mm. was in the opening, and I really like it. Okay. And I'm going to see a lot of movies yeah. <laughs> today. Yes. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, the, the movie El Nombre del Hijo is about a young trans boy who's sort of struggling with um, the things that he cannot change about his, his female body and the reaction of his environment to, to his female appearance. Um, what did you want to show about these these struggles in the movie? Um, okay, it it's not so much of a struggle with a I, I wouldn't call it like a feminine or a masculine body. I I, I would like it not to be so binary. I think uh, that's what's difficult for him also. Like his his. Our society is not so, or at least in our country, is not so open to like a boy having what we think uh, or what many people think it's for a girl, or a girl having uh, things for a boy, and that's a problem. Not the body is never a problem, and he's having dif difficulties um, with himself and with the bond with his father. His father like is trying to. Um, accompany, accompany him, mm -hmm. um, but it's it, it, the, the bond is being very difficult. So, and what he really needs uh, more than a, what what he really needs is to be able to hug his father, to to feel that fear. He's he has fear. He's just he can't feel that fear. He he. It's easier to fight with his father than. With the, with the world and with himself. Yes. So when he accepts uh, accepts that, um, he he can finally fe feel the fear, but uh, be accompanied accompanied <laughs> with his father. Okay. Yeah. And I kind of noticed that also there was um, the um, the age was very important. Yes. As I saw it in the movie, um, when I think about movies that have sort of a similar theme. Um, uh, many of them have sort of older protagonists, which are maybe, I don't know, 16, 17, or even adults. Um, is there a certain significance in that age to you of the protagonist, of being at, at that very young age, sort of struggling with it for the, for the first time? And, yes. and sort of just, just kind of having made that cut of saying like, no, this is how I am, like all that old stuff that I've been about until now that it, that is in the past. Um, yes, I think it's a very important moment. Like in, in generally in society, we believe that at 12, 13, 14, kids become adults, sort of biologically. Mm -hmm. And I thought, like, when well, what happened when a little boy, when his body starts to change? So there's like this. Um, I mean, you can be called different. You can dress different, but what happens when your body starts to do something like, how do you, 
deal with that. Yeah. Um, so I think it's like it's a very interesting age to 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 make that those questions. Yeah. Okay. And there's also this. Um, there's. Lutris is constantly sort of reminded of things that he has sort of put away or that he doesn't identify with anymore. Like when his father calls him to the table and he says, chicas, which, you know, like, come on girls, let's eat. Or when there is um, his little sister is sort of asking about his, his, his toys. Or she suggests that he lets his hair grow long. Um, what is the significance of those moments? Like, how do they tell something about how he is now, about his identity? I think it's very interesting, like, talking with families of, of, of trans kids, like, it's like it's the, it's the same person, it's just that some things have changed and have changed, uh, they, they had to deal with the past changing, you know? So that's kind of different, like, you, you understand it, it's a boy, but you remember him as a girl. Yes. So it's very confusing and loving, understanding, fighting fathers and mothers still got a little confused, and, and, but they are trying so hard, they are, they are fighting. Yeah. And I, I thought that was very interesting because um, it's not like erasing the yeah. past, it's just like um, feeling comfortable with it. Exactly, a sort of continuation, but, but with different sort of conflicts, right? That's right. Um, did you do a lot of research in that area? I mean, have there been experiences that you had with uh, families where there has been that sort of transition? I, I talked with as many families as I could. I read a lot. Um, and actually, well, we decided, when, when we made the casting, we decided to work with trans boys. So uh, the casting was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And, and we were able to, to work with Tristan, which is a protagonist, and, and you know, his mother, and that was, uh, it was very interesting. He's very different from Lucho, and uh, Lucho is the protagonist, uh, the fictional. Uh, he's very different in his personality, but he, he, he taught us a lot. He and his mother taught us a lot. Um, so we worked some things out in the script with, yeah. with his help. Okay. Yeah, that sort of shows in, in, the, in the figure of the father, really. I found it a very sort of beautiful, yeah, beautiful character in that way that he very tenderly tries to sort of do the right thing, but he doesn't really know how to, how to kind of grasp it. And um, has it also been, did you think of that as, as a sort of reference point for, for like non-trans people who sort of, to sort of say to them, okay, so this is probably what you're gonna have to go through. Like this is um, how it's gonna be. Like there's no clear answers. There's things that you're just gonna have to struggle with. Uh, for non-trans, uh, like for the for the family of, of trans people. Oh, to probably. I'm not. Uh, I mean, I'm more like the question. I hmm? I think. Um, I don't have any answers. I have questions. I, I, I ask myself, like, uh, how how would I raise, for example, a trans boy or a trans girl? How would it be like? I, like you know, you say I'm full of love. I want to my kids to be free. If you had one, or if you are a teacher, if you make movies for kids, or I, I mean, how how do we work with this child for them to be free? Mm -hmm. uh, because we aren't. Yes. <laughs> And, and I said, like, okay, from a loving point of view, what, how would it work? And I thought uh, I, I, I would have to do, I, I would make a lot of mistakes, but uh, if the love is there and if the intention is there, then you can finally, like, make him or her feel like um, he's not alone or yes. she's not alone. And it could be difficult or not, but she or he's going to be with you fighting. Yeah. So yeah. that, that, that was a yeah. message. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah that's, uh, it's a very touching moment when sort of the father talks to um, acquaintances of his and he talks about, um, that, well, he, he invites them to dinner or they invite him to, yes. to dinner and the um, Lucho kind of says, like, what did you say to them? Like, did you want them to call me Lucho? And his father replies, yes, is that, is that wrong? And that sort of embodies the whole idea, right? That is sort of this, well, 
with all your tenderness, you have to sort of see what is right and sort of struggle with it. He's trying so hard. It's, <laughs> it's like, it's so sweet that he, he's really trying. Yeah. He can make mistakes or not, but he's trying to do the best. He asks, is this okay? Is yeah. this not okay? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. that, that's the idea, exactly. And a little while um, further in the film, uh, Lucio gets up at night and he walks to the beach and he sort of looks at the wave and there's this, this beautiful shot of the waves kind of crashing on the beach. Um, is this something that you that you wanted to express with this? I mean, are, are the waves sort of mirroring his own like sort of inner conflict or? Uh, yes, I, I I think there are so many symbols yeah. in the sea. Yes, I mean, this this big, scary, uh, full of mysteries sea, and it's something like you can. You, you can contain the sea, it's the nature, it's the reality, it's just bigger than you, it can kill you, it can, I mean, it's really big and frightening. He never gets into, he never gets into the sea, the sea is always very far away in, in the rest of, of the film. Um, and then he faces it, he, he, he even tries to enter, he can't enter there yeah. alone, only with, I mean, only by hanging his father, I think that's the, all the fears in the, all the fears. The sea, it's like all the fears yeah. outside and inside of him that he can't face yet. Yeah, and sort of talking about fears, I mean, you, you said earlier that there, um, that uh, uh, there's a certain situation also with trans people in Argentina as, as there is probably with, uh, uh, in many communities and countries around the world. Could you describe that to us? Like how, how um, what is, I guess, the, the, the um, situation? The reality, in Argent I mean, the reality is changing, but now the, the, if you see the numbers, the life expectancy of a transgender woman, for example, in our country and most of Latin America, it's from 35 to 40 years. That's like, okay. You know, that even if things are changing, that's still a reality. It's, yeah. it, there's a lot of discrimination, a lot of violence. It's very difficult to enter in the system for them. So it's pretty ur ur urgent. Um, I think there's, so, uh, there's um, hope in families supporting their kids, their transgender kids. Mm -hmm. It's kind of... Um, new, there's movement, uh, people are talking about that and I think that's the thing that's going to change things because even if adults have a different reality now, they had a different past so it's not very easy to change things when, mm. I mean, you have been in the streets since you were 13 course, or 15. Yeah. Yeah. It's very different if you went to school, if your father and mother loved you and uh, there's a possibility of a new reality but I think that um, for that to happen, we have to talk about this. There, I mean, we have um, we have to celebrate diversity instead of <laughs> killing it. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's also embodied in Argentinian movies these days, Argentinian films that sort of mirror the situation of trans people? Uh, I think there are many people talking about that because it's a very hard reality and. Um, Yes, I, I, I think many of us are mobilized by, mobilized by that and there's not a very good representation in media. Mm -hmm. um, there is more and more, luckily, but we still have to, I mean, we, we still have to talk more about this. Yes. We, we still have to know more about this. We still have to fight a lot, a lot more for this. Yeah. So yes, there's a long way. Okay. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the interview, and I hope you, you thoroughly enjoy the Berlinale. Thank you very much. Okay, goodbye.